Okay class, today we're going to be talking about our router templates again, but specifically a sub niche within our router templates, which are our new wine rack templates. Not to be confused with wine caddy templates. They're pretty popular because you make, you know, a wine caddy to hold glasses on top of a wine bottle. We're not talking about those, but we do have a lot of those available at craftsettlements.com. What we're going to be talking about is our wine racks. So you can actually use these templates, here's just a few of them here, to create uh, double-sided wine racks to store wine bottles or whiskey bottles or whatever the heck else kind of bottles you want to store on these racks. Um, so we have a pretty simple one here which is a tabletop mounted one and the premise is that you buy one router template and you use that one template to make two walls and of course you use a template over and over and over until you don't need any more or you break it or whatever it may be but um, Essentially, you're making two identical walls and then you're joining them with a piece of wood or steel rod or doweling. But I'm going to be doing one today specifically that is using our, uh, I don't even know what to call this, but it's a kind of a cool shape. Um, it holds three bottles and it's got a built-in stand. So essentially, once we make two of these pieces, we're going to join them. Now, we talked about the doweling earlier. A couple of our uh, template designs have these half inch holes in them, small half inch holes. They are used to pocket out doweling receivers, essentially pocket out a small hole, not going all the way through your piece, but just enough to get half inch doweling uh, through it and to be able to join it. This is not half inch doweling, so it's not going to fit, but essentially once you've got that, you put your half inch doweling at all your holes, you join them together with glue or uh, finishing nails or whatever you use, and you've got your freestanding structure. So uh, I've went ahead and I've got this piece of walnut. It is pretty messed up. You've got a giant void here, uh, which is cool because I want to make it a little bit nicer and a little bit more unique than just a plain piece of walnut like these guys. What I'm gonna be doing here is I'm going to be filling this with blue resin, but I'm also gonna take this piece, run it over to our laser. We have a, a big Laguna laser, well, a couple of them actually here in the shop. Um, and we're going to create uh, a faux Lichtenberg uh, style, you know, wood burning type electrical texture. I actually did an entire video on testing how to do fake uh, Lichtenberg um, engravings and stuff and then back filling them with resin. Uh, if you know what a Lichtenberg is like using those uh, high voltage uh, train, uh, high voltage clamps and trans microwave transformer to basically burn, you know, a random fractal into your wood. Uh, but of course you could die and I don't like dying. Uh, so, so I basically made a video on make epic things that shows some different textures and SVG files that you can use with either a CNC machine or your uh, laser cutter to get sort of a similar effect. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with this. Of course, you don't need to do that. You could literally just take a plain piece of walnut or, or wood, any kind of wood, but you know, this is crafted elements. We've got to integrate resin into it somehow. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to backfill this with resin to give us a nice solid piece. And then tomorrow, once the resin's all set, I can come in, trace these guys out, cut two of the, uh, cut two sides from this sheet, and then we can proceed to assemble a fully finished, awesome wine storage rack. All right, so let's get started. Okie dokie. So I've already just got our um, fractal put up. I measured this board out, there it is on the screen, and I've dropped one of our uh, fractal vectors uh, onto it, and I've set it to an offset fill, which means our laser is going to come and burn the entire interior, hopefully getting deep enough that we'll be able to backfill it with resin. You can actually get these SVG files uh, on our Make Epic Things channel on that video I talked about. So if you go to the Make Epic Things YouTube channel, uh, find the video where it's like uh, Lichtenberg death or Lichtenberg without death or something like that. Uh, and there's a link where you can actually download all my SVG files that I use for this. You're welcome if you decide to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to bring this over to our laser and we're going to get this bad boy started.
the laser's done its job. It's obviously cut our fractal pattern in there. So the next thing is we're gonna top this up and backfill it with resin and fill this crack. Now the way to do that is either by putting this in a mold, but the easier way to do it, because this is fully enclosed, is just tape up the sides, tape up the bottom, making sure the resin is not gonna go anywhere. Uh, for that, we've got a few different types of tape you could use. Tuck tape is always pretty popular. It works really well. You could get away with a high-end painter's tape. Um, I've even seen people use the aluminum tape that you would use for like HVAC stuff. Work, works really, really well. The key is make sure it's sticky and put a um, piece of plastic down on your workbench or floor or whatever you're doing, uh, wherever you're pouring this, because if it does leak, because you know it's possible that it can leak, you don't want that stuff, uh, epoxy resin, hardening on your workbench or your floor. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go and tape up the bottom first and hopefully prevent anything from leaking. We'll add a couple of layers just to make sure it's good and sealed. Remember, we don't need a perfectly flat surface because we are gonna run this piece to the planer lightly to level it all out and make sure that uh, the resin that we backfill here is level with the wood, so don't get too obsessed with just how perfect and, and straight your tape is. So here um, I made intentionally made sure that our laser etching only goes to the edge. However, because I'm not sure how level this board is to begin with and how level this uh, table top is, I'm going to go ahead and put an entire perimeter of tape around here because if this part is higher than this part, you're going to have all the resin sinking this way and it's probably going to need it, right? So again, this isn't a science. This is more of an art. Of an art. And just basically from experience, take my word for it, that there's no such thing as too much tape to ensure the non-leaking of your resin off these things. All right, I think we're good here. Sealed up the bottom sealed up the sides as best we can. We're still going to have leaking, I will 100% guarantee that, but the key is that most of the resin stays on the board and gets into those crevices. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some resin and we'll get pouring. So the resin I've chose for this project is Total Boat's uh, Maker Boxy. Um, it is essentially an art resin. It is a shallow pour, typically like a tabletop resin. It's not really like a river table or a charcuterie board resin. Um, it's definitely not ideal for one inch depth. We have one inch depth here in this crack, but it's such a small volume that it's not going to matter. The vast majority of the rest of this is like an eighth to at most maybe like three sixteenths deep in these actual crevices that the laser made. So this stuff we could use all day long and the advantage is I can literally un remove the tape from this tomorrow and continue the project. Whereas if I had a different epoxy, I might have to wait a few days before I can actually start milling it down. Um, so what we're gonna do is grab our maker epoxy. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. And I actually have no freaking idea how much I'm going to, how much I actually need to make. Normally I'd measure it out and figure it out, you know, cubic inches to ounces whenever, but who the heck knows how much volume I'm gonna need uh, to fill these, all these lines. So I'm literally just gonna make a random amount. I'm gonna eyeball it. And hopefully I don't make too little and not too much because we certainly don't wanna waste our resin. Um, now for the color, I'm using um, Black Diamond's Iridescent Blue. Uh, Black Diamond, as well as Towboat, partners of ours. Uh, this plastic well is product to use, uh, so it would, it, it would be super amazing and helpful. If you are looking for resin, check out Totalboat.com. If you're looking for pigment, check out BlackDiamondPigments.com. Actually, actually, I don't even know if that's the right, right domain name. Just check out Black Diamond Pigments. Go to Google, type Black Diamond Pigments, and you will find them. They've got a bajillion and one colors in these super convenient um, jars, um, and I've never had a problem with any of their pigments, and we've been using them for three years now. So, yeah. And I picked something ridiculously blue, as I mentioned, uh, because I want this to really stand out on that dark walnut. So, wear a mask. Okay, I'm not wearing a mask. I've got my garage door open, but you really do want to wear a mask when you're uh, dealing with resin. I'm not wearing a mask at the moment because that would prevent me from talking to you and then the video wouldn't be so fun. So I'm taking one for the team here, guys. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna say 32 ounces. So we're gonna go 16 ounces of one, 16 ounces of the other, and hopefully that will be a sufficient amount to get this project done. The cool thing about Maker Epoxy as well is that 
um, because it is an art resin or a tabletop resin, it's like super thick. So it's actually going to have a tendency to leak less. If you use um, like a table, uh, sorry, a, a river table resin, or like a deep pour resin, it's almost like water. And it's going to have a higher chance of getting past my tape barrier than something like this. Like you can see, it's just like super thick, right? Which is, which is good for this application. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this mixing and I'm going to add our, um, our pigment and then we'll get to pouring. I've said this before in a couple of our videos, but just make sure that when you are mixing resin, you go around the sides of your container and you scrape the bottom. You get really in there because one mistake that people often make when they first start doing this is they just kind of mix like this and they forget that there's extra material around the sides and bottom that might be unmixed and then you end up with like soft spots in your resin or pieces that don't set, which really sucks. So you want to make sure you get a nice thorough mix, even if it takes you a little longer with a little bit more effort. All right, here we go. I think I've made too much, but that's okay. We'll find another project to use it on. And honestly, at this point, I again, I'm running this entire thing through the planer to level it out. So I'm literally just gonna throw it on here and spread it out with a spatula. Briskly wave that over the resin. Don't want to let it sit there because otherwise you'll burn your resin or wood and that'll just turn out not so good. So a quick wave of your wand, so to speak, and you'll get rid of all those bubbles like magic. Okay guys, so we're gonna let this set overnight. Like I said, it's like a 12 to 24 hour uh, set time if we can actually start working with it. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this entire point is literally just getting a nicer creative piece of material to work with. I could have skipped all this if I wanted to make a solid wood wine rack and we didn't have to go through the laser part and the resin part and all that, but where's the fun in that? We want to make this thing look super cool for YouTube. So um, we'll come back tomorrow, we'll run it through the planer and then we'll bring out our template and we'll start actually cutting out those components to our wine rack. got our piece that we filled with resin fully planed up it hasn't been sanded yet but I ran it through the planer to level it all out no point in sanding it because we only need to actually sand the pieces we're gonna cut out of this thing so we're gonna grab our router template in this case this is our wine rack one and as you can see I have just enough material to do two of them two sides right so we're gonna go ahead and line this guy up and trace it out with our pencil we can put the template aside now what we're going to do is we're going to rough cut this shape <clears throat> by rough cut you've heard me say it before we want to stay outside the lines or in this case inside the lines right we're going to cut this out we're going to cut this out we're going to cut this out we're going to cut out this entire shape but we're not going to go on the line we're going to stay an eighth to at most a quarter inch away from those lines we're gonna reattach the router template and use our router table to actually make that super accurate shape. So to cut this out, jigsaw, bandsaw, scroll saw, whatever you wanna do, hole saw for the centers, uh, whatever you have access to, you wanna cut a rough shape and then we'll come back and set the template up uh, to actually form these things.
we've got both of our pieces cut out of that raw piece of wood. We've got our template. And basically what we want to do is we're going to have to do this in two steps because we're going to have to take the template off and put it back on here. But we want to use this template, attach it to here temporarily uh, with two-sided tape, masking tape here, masking tape here, and CA glue, or my favorite method, the hot glue gun method, because it is, in my opinion, the quickest. But you just have to be careful because you got to do it really, really quick, get that piece down really, really quick, and pry it off carefully. But if you are okay, if you're good with the hot glue gun, this is the best, best method I found to use. So my hot glue gun is just warmed up and we just want to quickly go put a bunch of dabs everywhere and place this down and then we'll be good to go over to the router table. We're just lining it back up with those initial, the initial pencil lines that we drew approximately. So what we want to do here is just make sure our uh, bearing on our router bit is lined up with the template so it glides along the side of the template as you move this thing along and that the blade is sufficiently tall to get all the wood around the perimeter which it should be so we should be good to go Now in hindsight, what I should have actually done here is mounted the template to the back part because this, what you're looking at here, is gonna be one of the outer faces of our wine rack. So it's not going to have the uh, recessed pockets for our um, doweling. It's going, the doweling recessed pockets need to be on this side. So not a big deal. The next one I'm gonna actually flip over so I can actually pocket it, but I'll have to take this off of this one, re-glue it to the back to do the pocketing. But in the meantime, I'm gonna grab this put it on the other piece of wood and then router that just like I did this one. All right, to recess these little pocket holes here to accept our doweling, I'm gonna use the Amana tool, uh, 45475S. The S, I believe, stands for short. It's a really short uh, cutter, and obviously your bearing. So we're gonna install this on just our handheld trim router and line it up so our bearing just gets to the inside of the acrylic. You don't wanna go too deep at first, otherwise this thing's gonna jump around and you'll ruin your piece or, or ruin your bit. So again, start slow, and then we wanna get a total depth of anywhere from a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch just to, uh, to receive our uh, doweling that we're gonna to use to connect this project. Back to finish this project, another outfit change because I've been working on this video for like, I don't know, a week on and off. If you actually stick to it and did this project all at once, this is like a one or two day build. Um, but I've obviously, you know, just been busy with other things. So I just kind of fit in sections where I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this has been fully sanded. I will also say that the uh, hot glue that I used for this one was a nightmare to get off. The previous hot glue that I had used was smaller sticks and I never have a problem getting it off the wood. But this caused such a problem, so much so that 
I've actually like scraped sections out of the wood trying to get the glue off this and then I had to sand it. I cut my finger open with the scraper like it was kind of a disaster. So um, that's never something I had to deal with with these templates and the hot glue method before. Um, so I guess there is different types of hot glue. Hot glue I was using before, no problem, comes off the templates, comes off the wood, easy peasy. This stuff was a nightmare. So I would just be conscious of that. Um, maybe if you're using hot glue with these templates, test that hot glue on a piece of wood first, let it set for a few minutes and then see how e easy it is to get off. If it comes off easy, use that stuff. If it's a nightmare, don't use that stuff. Okay, because this is probably like another 20 minutes that got added to this project. Um, obviously we've pocketed out the holes. I've done a rough sand of this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick round over uh, on my router table just to give it a softer edge, do the entire thing. And then I got half inch doweling. I'm gonna cut this half inch doweling into sections. What I found is most of these things, uh, wine bottle holders end up being between six and eight inches. A wine bottle on average is 12 to 13 inches, but most uh, a good chunk of that is that neck, which isn't gonna be supported in this round section. So you're basically gonna want anywhere from like six inches to like seven, six, seven, eight inches total length to be able to support that wine bottle. If you make it too long, you're gonna have the wine bottle sitting like this because the neck's gonna sit here and the, the base is gonna sit here. If that makes sense, right? So we're gonna get them closer to this. We'll probably cut these into like five inch, six inch sections, which will give us enough. Um, the other option, as I mentioned, I think earlier is like aluminum. This is a hollow aluminum tube. It's half an inch diameter. Um, and you could technically use this as well, cut this into sections, you know, brush it with your, um, give it a brush look with uh, some sandpaper and then use that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use our doweling because that's what I have and it's pretty easy to use and I can just put it all together in minutes with wood glue. All right, we're gonna round this. I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna sand and we're gonna put it all together and we'll see what it looks like. I figured I would go ahead and finish these other two uh, without going through the entire process. But essentially with this one, we're making a box. I took the additional uh, side pieces of walnut. I took them over to the miter saw, uh, 45 degree angled each corner to essentially join them together. In hindsight, this isn't my best work. Um, this particular piece, the side walls, is actually thinner. Uh, the material's thinner than the stuff that we cut for the actual, you know, wine support. So when I 45 them, they don't quite fit together, but nothing a little bit of, uh, well, a lot bit of uh, wood filler and sanding won't fix, but I me mean, it turned out pretty good. And of course I brought it over to laser and added a, a nice personal touch. I don't have anyone actually particularly in mind for this. I just thought it'd be a little bit funny. Not that there's anything funny about alcoholism or mental health or anything like that, but you know, it's a wine rack. So I wanted to make it a little bit more whimsical. Uh, with this guy over here are Hexapus, the six armed octopus, same kind of thing. I uh, finished it up, sanded it up, cut some dowels, I think five and a half or six inches, four of them. And it was pretty simple just to uh, glue them together. Just a side note that if you do run into an issue where, you know, your dowels are expanded, you know, it's pine or, or poplar, so they might be a little bit over half an inch, you can just do a quick sand and kind of round the edges of the, uh, the ends of the dowels to make sure they fit in those pocketed holes that you made. And finally, the main project here, which is the one we really started with and the one we focused on for most of this video is the Wine Rack 1. And this one, again, 
Um, pretty cool project, and I took the dowling and uh, painted it black before I cut it. Um, just to make it look a little cooler to go with the walnut and blue. But I think it turned out really, really good. Um, and instead of using the Total Boat Wood Honey, which is what I used for this guy uh, and the Six Leg Octopus one, uh, I actually just used a clear coat spray paint with this guy. So it's a little glossier, a little shinier, and it probably will hold up a little bit better. Um, it's obviously, it doesn't need to be applied um, over time like the, the Wood Honey may, depending on the environment it's in or if it's getting washed or whatever. So either way, I think they all turned out really good. Um, you can get any of these three wine rack templates, of course, at craftedelements.com to allow you to make things just like this with your router table, your handheld router, and a little bit of imagination. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, please post them below. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed to us here on YouTube, make sure you do so because we're always doing fun things like this with our products and always coming up with new things to make your life easier as a maker and woodworker. Thanks for watching guys and happy making.